is it possible to have two eureka server two eureka server yeah i think so yes yeah. port we can change 8761 instead of that we can have it on other port as well and then all the clients that is there eureka client so we can uh, combine we can have that uh, values as in the endpoint the on this also registered and also on that registered okay do you know what hash code method returns yeah it will return on hash code which is uh, which is a unique Id identification for the particular class i think uh, yes yes so it will return an integer value and yes, that yes. integer value is defines that where exactly we are storing so for every object there will be a different hash code the different yes, integer yes. value what is ioc ioc is a uh, means uh, the full form is inversion of control so generally in the old age development right before the spring uh, comes into the actual uh, it world so what we were doing we were doing the for example any dependency right yeah. so we were actually creating the object of that dependency and then then we embed those de uh, dependency in our constructor either or uh, using setter right so that was the uh, task of a developer to provide a dependency but with the help of spring right that action now it is taken care by the framework only so using the ioc that's inversion of control that control of making uh, control of firing all those dependencies or embedding those dependencies is now taken care by the spring only what do you understand by continuous integration and continuous delivery so actually the basic uh, actual life cycle of any project is right uh, that we get the requirements then we code the application as per the requirements then we deploy the application right then on the various environments for unit test environment test environment unit environment qa and final production right so it's a manual process right uh, previously all the developers uh, were doing all these steps manually by their self by right so now we have this ci cd pipelining where the we, we can automate all this process so so as a developer we need to concentrate only on our uh, source code we don't want to do all those uh, necessary but non functional aspects of uh, our uh, development process uh, for example, uh, we just in in actual CI/CD we write the code and then we push the code to the our repository, and then by uh, using CI/CD tool like a Jenkins, uh, rest everything taken care by Jenkins only. So automatically test will test cases will be run. Uh, once test case is successful, it will uh, create a, a war file, deploy the application on various uh, environments. So that uh, process will be automated using um, CI/CD tool. That's the uh, advantages so that our uh, application deployment uh, and uh, development time will be get uh, will get reduced and since there is no manual intermission, so there is a less bugs, right? How will you implement concurrency in your Java program? The concurrency, the concept we are using for the uh, asynchronous whenever we are trying to uh, process the multiple, what we can say, the threads so that the individual threads will performing the different different tasks. So let's say there will be a call to API and that API need to perform the different operations with the inputs. So like one call it is taking to the DB operation and one it at the same time it is trying to access the other downstream uh, API or application and getting pulling the data from there. And similarly, if you want to do some other processing on that data so that we can do with the, this multi-threading asynchronous concept that comes into the con Okay, so suppose you are getting uh, this error in your application which is application context is getting failed so what is the first mm -hmm. thing you will check in that application to make sure that what is what is the actual error uh, so, uh, so if context path is wrong there there might be a so first thing i would ask to check the url if it is correct Oops, so it is correct then we'll go and check if there is a service is deployed with the same name then I'll check the service name which I have given at the time of calling. So is it the correct one? And if if, if everything is fine, if service is deployed correctly on the first, on uh, uh, like if I'm using Eureka, if my service is properly attached and the service discovery name is correct and it is used in the correct manner, that's what few things I will check. There are two types of Java memory model. There are two types of memory, heap and stack. Do you know about that? Heap and stack. A heap memory and a stack memory. You are asking those things, right? Uh, so yes, uh, stack memory. Those memories I had uh, about it. Yes. Okay. So in Java, where exactly it stores the objects? Is it a heap memory so, or okay. stack memory? Yeah, it will be heap memory. I, I think it's a heap memory. So, yeah. but I don't. I, 
Yes, it is heap memory. What is the use of POM dot XML file in Maven apart from dependencies? In POM XML, we apart from dependencies, we mention the starter packages of pack. Uh, so dependencies, uh, there are so if open in Eclipse. Apart from XML, we can see there are multiple tabs where we can define. So one is like where you can mention current packages you want to install for your project. This is one thing I think. And apart from that, on the basis of that package, is download the interfaces. We can mention your plugins, which plugins you want to install. Again, packaging type can be mentioned. And again, if uh, there is one concept, which is of root form, we say, when we have dependent. So it is kind of, I'm just confused. It is on more a side on build XML, where we use root forms to configure a build uh, dependency structure as a as a software developer what are the good software practices for developing a scalable testable maintainable software you will follow there are uh, various aspects in that then if you are asking that uh, first of all if you go by the scalable then uh, you could uh, write your code is such as that uh, means your particular package would be you can deploy urgently such as the to go by the services, the microservices architecture, or your own services which you create with services which you could uh, develop or uh, deploy on multiple topics. So, scalable. This would mean so, probably classic. If you are using some classes, uh, it could be only specific to that application. Maintainable, you should uh, follow the uh, normal or uh, uh, best practices for coding best practices and uh, uh, design patterns or solid or means or solid yeah, and this uh, repeatable. So, and you should comment your code always with you write and uh, try to keep it simple as 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 simple as possible so that it's uh, understandable by the other testable look means uh, that i would say that uh, you should uh, write the k unit test process whatever is possible you should write it and uh, keep it in your with your code itself part of your code so that whenever someone changes runs that suit of test process and uh, that should uh, pass whenever uh, that changes occurs so in your architecture uh, suppose one service is very slow so how do you make sure that uh, your uh, other services won't call that service? You also work with JDBC templates, right? Yeah. So yeah. there may be some uh, tables which your API is using. So can you yeah. tell me a few of the steps which you, you know how to connect with the databases and uh, interact with the databases to fetch the values and either save something in database? Uh, so I should should I go from the controller to repository or a uh, direct start from uh, DB? Yeah, you can tell me direct by DAO layer. So controller okay. may be calling a DAO layer or service layer, and from there you can tell me. Yeah, as soon as uh, get a call from service layer to DAO layer, mm -hmm. uh, so that time we have a JDBC template instance uh, which will be auto wired. So by by defining the uh, the credentials of uh, our DB in our properties properties class, so that time it will be a sorry uh, sorry I lost it is somewhere between uh, whenever all the uh, DB uh, credentials are uh, stored in our uh, properties file, so as soon as uh, call our JDBC template uh, by using Atoid, it will do an internally give make a connection and give a instance of JDBC template and uh, by using JDBC when as soon as we get a JDBC templates on the our require on the basis of requirement whatever if we want to uh, uh, fetch from any object uh, from our any employee employee of employee informations from our table so that time we make call to a DB by using their there is uh, JDBC JDBC uh, methods uh, that that JDBC template provides uh, is a query for objects. So that we that will be give uh, that uh, whole whole record from our DB. So there are there are more JDBC templates method for uh, uh, depend we, that we can use on our requirements. Have you used put or patch method? No, most of the time we love get, get and post most of the time. But put is used for the for when whenever we want to uh, updation do any updations on our in already existing record. That time we use put 
पुट में था ओके okay.